Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Love Summon. And as you can see, it is a glorious day in Vermont. Yes, it's uh, about 40 degrees, a perfect day to open up the Airstream and do a midwinter check. What's a midwinter check, you say? Well, everybody winterizes, right? Yes. Everybody dewinterizes, but there's also an important step to take, and that's midway through the season. Get out to your RV, get out to your rig, check to see how things are looking, yep. and make sure everything's good. So we're going to show you the steps that we take for our midwinterization check. Yes. Stay tuned to the end of this video too, because at the end, I'm going to take my water filter from a season of use, cut it open, and we're going to see what it looks like on the inside. So should be interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I don't know what, if I want to see what it looks like inside. So are you going to be able to open it? Yeah, we'll figure out a way. All right. So this is some of the things we check for inside our airstream for our midwinter check. We do check the mouse traps more frequently in case we do get mice in them. We haven't gotten many mice though, so that's a good thing. We have the stamp rid, which is good for keeping the moisture down in the airstream during the winter time. We interrupt this episode of Love Summon to bring you this important breaking news. So what happened? Well, I'm always trying to kick up my RV knowledge. And one of the things I was going to do with this video was to include the chemical reaction for damp rid. And you can see that shown below. And then I started looking at it and I'm like, hmm. The calcium chloride breaks down into calcium and chlorine ions in a dissolved aqueous solution. Well, how can you have an aqueous solution when it's freezing outside? That made me think. So I went ahead and called Damprid. And sure enough, when I talked to the individual at the Damprid hotline, and there is such a thing, they said Damprid does not work when it's below freezing. So all these years we've been putting in jugs of Damprid to keep things dry during the winter seasons, and it didn't do anything. So hey, even making these videos, we learn a lot too, which is one of the awesome reasons we love doing them. All right, back to our regularly scheduled programming. So as you can tell, we strip the bedding off the bed there, and the, we take the cushions from the dinette inside. Anything that a mouse might chew or get into, we try to keep out of the Airstream during the winter time. And we also open up all the doors and drawers that can be opened. All right, so we also keep the refrigerator door open. That is also to prevent mold and mildew. We also have a little prop to keep the freezer compartment open as well. And we're just checking to make sure these things are still open. Make sure the door hasn't accidentally shut itself. Or right, and, and everything whatever. just looks good. And we keep the shower curtain open as well. We're just looking for anything that just doesn't look right and everything is looking pretty good. Yeah, we take everything out during our winterization process. So we have no dishes, we have no food, we have no canned items, we have absolutely nothing except for maybe a few magnets left on our stove. Yep. So that's our midwinter interior check. The next thing we're going to talk about is a little bit of tender loving care for our batteries. You can see the battery is not in the RV, it's actually stored inside in the heated garage. I'll show you what we're going to do there. But here's an important safety tip before we get to the battery. And that's, as you can see, I leave my propane tanks onto the RV. You should never, ever, ever, never put your propane tanks inside your house, inside your garage or whatever. They should always remain outside. Propane is heavier than air. If ever this valve were to fail, the propane would go into your house and would be an explosive hazard. So you want to make sure that you keep it outside. It's not going to freeze. The freezing point of propane is negative 304.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And even in Vermont, it doesn't get that cold. So uh, you don't have to worry about it. It's not like the water in your line. So let's go ahead and take a look at our battery inside. Okay, like I said, we store our battery inside our heated garage, but um, for the purpose of this demonstration here, we're gonna bring it inside the house because only the highest quality of sound is acceptable for Love Summon videos and the acoustics in the garage are horrible. So let's go ahead and set this thing down and take a look at it. And the first thing we're gonna do is check its voltage. Um, I'm gonna use my Fluke 115 multimeter, which we feature in our video on five Airstream tools you might not know you need. And we're gonna go ahead and take a look at its voltage. So it's reading 12.49, 12.5. So um, that's pretty good for this particular battery. It's a lead acid battery. I'm probably gonna upgrade to an AGM, but for now that's pretty good. If I were to go ahead and charge it, I have a Deltran 1.25 amp battery charger and maintainer. And I don't 
do this unless the voltage looks like it needs to be hooked up. Uh, here's a pro tip though. If you have one of these things, keep it in your kit on the RV on the road. We had our voltage converter fail um, on the road during our summer trip and we knew that because the 110 was working fine but the voltage of the battery was 12.3 when 110 was hooked up and it was going down as we used the system so the battery was not being charged which was indicative of that voltage uh, converter failing so in order to keep things going for a week at a time when we were down we would keep the charger hooked up to the 110 and then hooked up to the battery here so that the battery would continually be charged and we were able to continue until I was able to replace the converter and you can see the picture of the old and new converter here uh, we replaced it and it was good to go but this is definitely something to keep you limping along should your uh, voltage converter fail but this battery is looking good we're going to put it back up and if it needs to be hooked up again we'll hook it up to this Deltran converter charger yeah, sounds good the next thing we're going to look at is some tire care if you guys have watched my video on replacing my Goodyear marathons you'll know that I am obsessive about my tires and so we're going to take a look at them you can see during winter storage we keep UV covers on the tires to protect them but we're going to take those UV tire covers off and we're going to go ahead and check the air pressure I want to check the air pressure to make sure I haven't had a sudden loss of pressure so that the tire deflates and is sitting on a deflated tire now I filled these up to 65 psi right before um, I put the air RV into storage according to Guy Lassick's law of gases in a given volume as temperature increases pressure increases and the converse is true as temperature goes down pressure goes down in a given volume so I would expect my pressure to be less because I filled it to 65 psi uh, when it was warm it's about 40 degrees According to Goodyear, you lose about one to three pounds of pressure per 10 degrees drop or 10 degrees gain. So I usually use two. So I'm expecting we should be around 61-ish or so PSI as I check. One other important thing, you'll notice I don't have my tire pressure monitoring systems on. It's not having nothing to do with the battery because the battery in here is lithium and it's got non-aqueous electrolyte. So the battery won't be affected. But I don't like how when this is installed, it, it applies consistent pressure to the valve stem. And when I'm using it over the course of the summer and the spring and the fall, I'm taking this off every couple times a week or at least once a week to check the pressures manually. But when it's over the winter, I don't like having that valve stem compressed the entire time. Because if I were to take it off in the summer or spring, then it may not seat itself uh, like it should. That's just my theory. I have no data to prove that. So when I store the air shirt or the RV, I take the little senders off and then I install just the regular cap. Let's go ahead and take a look at the pressure. Yep, and we're at 60 PSI. So, um, that's about where you thought it might be. I estimated 61, so it depends upon what pressure I filled, or what temperature I filled the tire at. So at 60, yep. That's pretty good, right? It's called science. As part of your midwinter check, don't just worry about your RV or your truck, also worry about the accessory items like your generator. I always try and run it at least once, maybe twice during the course of the uh, winter season. But we're going to start by checking the oil first. Then we'll get her started, let her run and heat up. And I think that's a good maintenance practice. All right, we're going to let her heat up, get up to operating temperature. Get everything flowing. All right, we've been running it. We got it up to operating temperature, ran it for a while. And don't ever forget, if ever you have to put fuel into this and you're gonna store it for more than one to two months, stable fuel stabilizer. You'll be glad you did. the edge of 
the table there. Don't go any further than that. Sweet. What the inside of that thing looks like. What it is that black stuff? Well, that's the carbon filters. It's like a carbon material, charcoal type. You can see the sponges on the inlet. Cool. Doesn't look that dirty, actually. Actually, I expected it to be really kind of. Full you could of... probably use it for more than one season. Not that one anymore. I, well, yeah, this one. Well, I could probably tape it together. That might work. <laughs> sure, you could. So this looks like a good example of, of how this thing works and what the intake is because here's the intake and you can see that it has a nice that really slimy brown color you would think that it goes through the middle part and then it comes out this way and you can see that's probably what it looked like when you bought it this nice gray clean color so i think that's how it's working so we hope you enjoyed that episode of Love Subbing, and maybe it inspired you to do a midwinter check on your RV. Maybe not open up your uh, water filter though. <laughs> what? That's super cool. Doing stuff like that is super fun. But if you like this video, click the subscribe. Give us a big thumbs up if you enjoyed our episode. And leave a comment below if uh, there are other maintenance checks that you would recommend doing in the midwinter uh, process. And we come out with content when? Every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.